Hey everybody, welcome back to another Motivation Monday podcast for Monday, August 13th, 2018. Hope you had a great weekend, hope everything is going well for you. This week I wanted to talk about some tunes that I think that everybody should learn. And let me uh, explain a little bit of background. So I've talked about this on the show before, but I play in a traditional style New Orleans group called the Soggy Po Boys. And one of the things that I've realized over six years of playing with this particular band is how important it is to reach back and learn the tradition from the actual source, right? So we get caught up so much in like wanting to be modern jazz musicians. I myself am exactly the same way. Most of my life is built around that modern sound, trying to push the barriers a little bit, um, learning contemporary techniques, trying to sound like my favorite modern musicians. But a big part of my life nowadays is really reaching back and playing music from, you know, 1920s through the 1930s. And what I've realized over all these years is that learning the tunes that come from that particular tradition that are in that particular canon of material is one of the most valuable things that I've ever done on several different levels. So let's talk about a couple of those levels and then I will give you some tunes that maybe you can learn. Um, So the first thing is, is that these tunes are just a lot more simple. Uh, They don't contain kind of the bebop style of, you know, let's say we're playing something at 200 BPM and there's two chords per measure. And all of these chords have alterations to them and, you know, really that kind of bebop sound. These tunes don't do that. The harmony was much, much more spread out. Uh, They would hang out on certain chords and in certain key centers for much, much longer of a duration. And that can do several things for us. It can really simplify our thinking a little bit. Because sometimes I feel like the less changes there are, the more difficult it actually is to play over some of these tunes. Because sometimes the chord changes can actually dictate what we do to a major extent. So, you know, we have all this interesting stuff to play, but if I were to put one chord in front of you and say, okay, you have to play over this one chord for eight measures, would you be able to play something super interesting or would you have to work on that for a while? In my case, I had to work on that for a long time. When I first started playing this music, I was like a lost puppy trying to play over this stuff, and it really sounded pretty awful. But over the years, I've, I've learned to really develop my playing over this style, learned to make adjustments. Again, I've talked about this on the show before, so I won't go into it in detail. But that's one of the beautiful things about these tunes is that it's a kind of a completely different chord structure. So just less chords in general. Now, the second thing is a lot of these tunes follow a very, very basic chord progression. And what you notice when you start getting into uh, this particular set of tunes, this particular set of repertoire, is that it's very, very repetitive. So things like using just the one chord, maybe the four chord, the six chord, five of five, and five. So many of these tunes just utilize those chords that I just said and nothing else. So what happens is when you start to play over these tunes for a while, you really start to develop an ear for this very traditional harmony. So you can really, really hear when the one chord goes to the six chord and then starts a turnaround, right? Or you can really hear when four goes to sharp four diminished, you know, going back to one, that is in this music all over the place. And this, playing this stuff on a very, very regular basis has probably helped my ears more than almost anything that I've ever done. And I only wish that I had done it sooner. So really getting some of these tunes down, playing them on a regular basis, maybe start a traditional jazz band wherever you live, whoever you play with. You might meet a little bit of resistance, uh, especially if you're a little bit younger, but I think that once you get into it, it's impossible not to enjoy playing this stuff. It's become one of the funnest things that I do on a regular basis. 
Um, so it'll really improve your ears. That's the second thing that I think is major, major, major. Now, it also, if you're somebody like me, who before I came to the style, was really only going for the most modern of sounds, right? Like a, a sound that's rooted in bebop, but is trying to really push the boundaries of that. Again, that doesn't work over these tunes. It doesn't work if you're really trying to evoke that style of the 1920s and the 1930s. And that forces you a little bit outside of your comfort zone. It really forces you to do some different things, learn some new techniques, maybe learn to chill out a little bit, play a little bit less, um, and really get into the style so that what you're playing is appropriate over the repertoire that you're playing it on. So I think those are three things that really warrant a closer look at some of these tunes that I'm about to give you. So here's just an extremely short list of tunes that I feel like everybody should know uh, when it comes to this kind of style. So the first one would be When You're Smiling. Take a look at that one. That's a great, great tune. A Louis Armstrong tune called Hotter Than That. And we're actually going to be doing an entire episode on that coming up on Friday. So we're going to get a little bit deeper into it. And we're really going to dedicate this week to, to this style of music. So take a look at Hotter Than That. Uh, Some of These Days, that's a great, great, great tune that basically has everything that I'm talking about when it comes to these types of chord structures can also check out a tune called Digga Digga Do. That's a great one that has a minor to major structure that's really indicative of this style of music. And one more would be Someday You'll Be Sorry. That would be a great one as well. So I think if you learn those tunes that I just mentioned, uh, you'll be well on your way to really understanding the style. And I really truly think that it will benefit your more modern playing or whatever you want to call it. Um, now, there's a great resource online where you can actually get lead sheets to all of these tunes for free, and that is the New Orleans Jam Book. Just go on Google and type in New Orleans Jam Book, and it's going to come up with the exact site that you want. It's such a great site. I've used it so many times to download these tunes. The lead sheets are really cool because it has the melody in B flat, and it has the chord structure in concert pitch. It's basically everything you need to just take one of these tunes on a gig and start playing it or shedding it or whatever you want to do. So that's a fantastic resource where you can find just about every single tune that I just mentioned. And I think this is going to be good for a lot of you out there. If you've been resisting this style, it's time to stop resisting and learn a little bit about it. We have to look back before we can look forward. And I think that that's happening less and less these days. So hopefully this was helpful for you. I hope you have a great week. Uh, Tune in on Friday because we're going to have an episode that features the great Louis Armstrong and talks about some of these concepts that I just mentioned. We're going to look at a little bit of his solo on Hotter Than That and uh, really excited about that episode. All right. Have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.